MTG, Kaladesh, Top 10 Cards, Hype, Trav here, MTG Lion, what's going on? Hey guys, so we're going to bring you my top 5 cards and Travis's top 5 cards. Always very interesting to see um, different opinions, I guess, on what we like. Yeah, I also try to, I, I, I kind of know you're going to pick some of the mythics and pricier stuff, <laughs> so I'll try to pick like some rogue, comments and uncommons. And I like that because we might have one or two cards overlap, but otherwise... Um, yeah, it's considerably yeah. different. Also, thanks to everybody who requested this, because people do. They're like, yo, when's the next collab for the set review? So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I didn't... That's great. Yeah, definitely happy to bring it to you guys. Yeah, so... Um, what is... You want to start? Yeah, I'm going to start with the red-blue planeswalker, mm -hmm. which name I will continue to butcher. Sahili Ray? Sahili uh, Rai Ray... Ray, Ra. I don't know. Uh, I like her a lot. She's very unique. Uh, one of the my favorite planeswalkers has, um, which also name I butcher all the time, Doc Faden, Dake Faden. Dak, <laughs> I don't who knows, know. right? If, it, if we understand it, it's correct. It's So this planeswalker is very good. It's at Mythic, Star City Games. It's at twenty four ninety nine right now. Mm -hmm. uh, her plus one is very relevant with the scry and then deal one damage. That's very useful. The minus two is creating a token, a copy target artifact or creature you control. Um, and that's very, very good. I think it's modern playable. Um, yes. I don't know if it's... I don't know. It, it would have to find a home. What do you think about this card? Um, it's First of all, I mean, it's a three-mana Planeswalker. And oh, it's uh, so it's something to pay attention to in standard. The minus two makes it kind of a good late-game top deck, which is rare for planeswalkers to like you know you could copy a gear hulk or something pretty that's crazy. exactly what uh, yes. i would be copying <laughs> yeah uh which is super good and in modern there's a few infinite combos like liquid metal coating and may turn it into an artifact and then disciple the ball and just uh i'm not sure if that actually works no i think you need mycosynth lattice but the actual real one is multiple sahilis with a sun titan Sun Titan comes in, <laughs> you clone it, get a Sun Titan, bring back Sahili. It's crazy. Pick that one. Yeah, so you, there's an infinite combo. And since Sun Titan is a thing and uh, Jess Guy is a thing, sure, it might. I yeah, don't know if it's I mean, going to be if it finds a home in modern, yeah. uh, the more power to it. But I think it's just going to be a really fun card to play with. Okay. Um, on my first pick, this might be on your list. So I'm going to start I'm gonna start with the, the one mythic on my list. Maybe I have two mythics. Sky Sovereign. Oh, yeah. It, it, it is not actually yeah. on my list, but it's um, definitely a great speculation. New vehicle. So I have a lot of faith in Wizards that they're just going to push. They're going to push the new mechanic. It's bad for business if these cards aren't in the Pro Tour Top 8. Sky Sovereign in Pro Tour Top 8. That's my pick. Maybe I'll play it. <laughs> you should play it, but tell me uh, before so I can mm. buy some. So, well, I think it'll be in there regardless. It's just a really good card at five mana. It's very good against Reflector Mage and Spell Queller. Yeah. Comes down, kills them over the top. Uh, it's decent against Ishkana, so it just matches up well against things. It's very good against Sweepers, like the new Fumigate, Planar Outburst, Radiant Flames. It has Pseudo Haste. It's just an amazing card, and uh, I think a lot of decks will play a couple copies. Yeah, I like it a lot, and definitely um, from my standpoint, whenever they bring out a new mechanic, sometimes they get it under, they believe it's underpowered, and out of all the vehicles, that is the one that I think that if they made a mistake, it would be in this vehicle, like being too powerful. It's super strong. It's a real, I, I, I love it. I think it's, it's yeah. really good. So my next pick is the most expensive card of the set at number four, Chandra, Torch of Defiance, the four ability Chandra, who's sitting at fifty nine ninety nine right now on Star City Games, which is, you know, it's always ex more expensive, but I use them as my price point. Lots of different abilities, has two plus one abilities, uh, a minus one ability that deals four damage to a creature, which is great because it's creature removal. Uh, the one thing that I think a lot of people are overlooking is he starts with four four loyalty. That's a lot. Yes. Four counters is a lot of counters for something that this powerful. Um, she can accelerate you into a Gear Hulk with her uh, second plus one ability, adding two red to the mana pool. And that is very good. She can draw you cards 
with her first plus one ability. And then her minus two ability, I mean minus one, her ultimate ability I don't find as useful. Oh, but from, what is it, six damage? Whenever you cast a spell, like five or six uh, damage? Whenever you cast a spell, the emblem deals five damage to target creature or player. But I think her first two abilities are just so good. You're drawing pretty much an extra card. You're adding two red, so you can accelerate into something huge. And then you can deal, uh, it looks like four damage. Wow, four damage. Oh, it's a minus three ability. I was like, wow, for minus one. I just oh, keep... minus one would be insane. It's a minus three ability and deal four damage to target creature. So overall, it does have protection. I like it a lot. Do you think you will be playing this card? I probably won't. I just generally stay away from the Chase Mythic Planeswalkers. Yeah. Is this car card insane? Yeah, I mean, it's got four abilities. It ramps, it burns, it draws extra cards. The, the ability will finish the game, it seems. Is, is it going to be... Is 60 a good speculation? I have no idea. But it is... <laughs> it just seems... <laughs> Like what? The question is like, what sorts of decks will play this? Well, I feel like a ramp deck would want it. Yeah, definitely. An aggro deck might want it to kind of finish. A mid-range deck. Is, is Modern Jund gonna play this? I've seen some discussion of that. So, it just we'll see if it's overhyped or I not. I mean, the deck that you played with at the uh, GP was kind of like you know a planeswalker deck. Yeah, I've got a Mardu control list with this in it. Yeah, I I would could see this being the an additional color. And then Chandra, the Oath of Chandra is also very good. Yes. You know, as a spot removal for one in a red. Yeah. Um, and that's probably, like, when I was watching you play the deck, uh, one of I think one of the issues was spot removal. Because you did have uh, Oath of Liliana, mm -hmm. but that's kind of up to your opponent what to give you. Mm -hmm. And then when they're playing that spider creature, you know, they're not going to give you anything yeah. really that relevant. Yeah, I have a list that looks like that. So, I mean, people will play it. Chandra will see play. It's a safe pick. It might drop to 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will drop to 40. Yeah. It might go up to 80, though. I mean... Eh, I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, it would have to ha see... It would have to be ubiquitous. Uh, I would say uh, slightly overhyped, but very, very, very good. Mm. Okay, so what's your pick? Next pick. Next pick. All right, I'm going to pick... So I'm going to go from... Um, I've got a common on the list. I'm going to save it till the end. I'm going to go to an mm. uncommon. Harnessed Lightning, for one, <laughs> it's just hilarious. The art, I mean, it, it's me. <laughs> this is the burn spell. <laughs> yeah, for two. Yeah, yeah, I saw the tweet <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah I um, it, it just looks like me. Um, <laughs> with a uh, kind of, yeah, with just a troll face. But also, <laughs> yeah, so I've got a soft spot for it. But also the card is really interesting. I wanted to pick an energy card. I could have picked the Otherworks yeah. Marvel, but this one, it seems great and limited. It seems potentially it really good and constructed. Is viable? Hmm? It's energy. How good do you think energy will be? It's hard to say because it's so weird. We're testing it out. It I, I don't yeah. know yet. I mean, I know that a Voltaic Brawler on two into a Lath New Hellion on three is 16 damage. Good. You can mulligan to one card and do 16 damage on the fourth turn. That's pretty good, yeah. That's insanity, right? We have to look at that. So Harness Lightning is going to fit into there. It's a really cool card because it's flexible. You can use it as kind of an energy ritual. Or you can do you do one dam kill something for one damage. Shoot a selfless spirit, keep all three energy, and then use the next one to six damage. It just kills a Gear Hulk, right? It's a, a really good burn spell in the context of of the new standard it's just a it's a sweet card that's my and i was had to pick one energy card i picked that one. Oh, that's a good one yeah that's definitely good and i can see there i can see the resemblance <laughs> you gotta get someone to make an altar of that for you yeah well i think i am the altar <laughs> True. I True. I mean, <laughs> maybe it's not me who knows i just think i think it's pretty funny ah it's awesome had to pick it it's awesome either way okay so my next one is yet again another planeswalker Dovin Ban or mm -hmm. Bane, uh, two a white and a blue. Um, it's very good. Plus one until end of turn, one target creature gets mind free minus zero and activated abilities can't be activated until the end of the of your next turn or the end of their um, next turn. Until your yes, until your next turn. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the Liliana effect when you minus yeah. two minus one freezes it. Yep, 
it freezes it for a little bit, and then minus one, you gain two life and draw a card. And then the ultimate is you get a minus seven, you, you get an emblem your opponents can't untap more than two permanents during their untap steps. But I'm going to use this card, if I use it, in my file layer deck, of course. Uh-huh. I'm going to use it as minus Ooh. one, draw, gain two, draw a card. Minus one, gain two, draw a card. Minus one, <laughs> gain two, draw a card. Cool. Play another yes, one. Yes. It's just pure gasoline. So from so you're going you're preparing for the pro tour. Mm-hmm. Are, are you looking at control decks right now? What do you think about the meta for control? It seems weak in my opinion, but I don't know. I'm Con- not. Control will certainly be good with crazy sweepers and planeswalkers and new counters. Um, I'm not necess- It's not necessarily on, on a high pick because if you go to an F and M or even a Grand Prix, you kind of know what people are playing, so you can metagame yep. a little bit. You go to a pro tour. You don't know exactly what you're going to see and face. It's a little bit harder to build control. So, I mean, we do see black-white control won the last Pro Tour, but his main deck was kind of messed up, and he had to fix it through sideboarding. You know, it's just a little bit... I prefer to be more proactive if possible, but I definitely have blue-white on my list. Spell Queller, Dovin, Fumigate, uh, Gear Hulk, uh, Anticipate, and the new counter, and... Uh, unsubstantiated blessed alliance like uh, it seems good yeah the two two that gains you two and draws two you know like blue white is a thing it's pushed good pick so okay my next one metalwork colossus this card is crazy yeah Yeah, i know i remember that one um you can return it from your graveyard to your hand by sacking two artifacts it costs X less, where X is the cost of non-creature artifact permanence. So you can set up a situation where by the fourth turn, this thing costs zero. And then if you have Sanctum of Ugans, you can chain them and put out two yeah. or three ten oh, yeah, on the fourth cool. turn. Yeah, a lot of decks can't beat that. There's some decks that can sweep, but you can just sack off a few Prophetic Prisms, pick it up again, untap in the mid-game, and you can pay five or six for them. So that, it just seems stupid. Like... <laughs> We've never seen anything like that that's like zero mana 10-10. That is... <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? It's pretty OP. Yeah. It's definitely very good. Um, all right. So I'll go with my next one. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two is not a Planeswalker. It's the card that I'm most excited about, actually, which regardless of value, um, especially foils, A for Hub. So Ooh, it's a land. Yeah. It enters the battlefield. You get an energy. It does not come and play tapped. You can tap it. You can add a colorless, which is great for the Adrazi. Or then you can tap it. You can pay an energy. And then you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Mm. This one is... I'm very excited for this one because there's a card called Tendo Ice Bridge. Yeah. And this card is just better in every single way. But mm. Tendo Ice Bridge is a very expensive... It used to be a very mm-hmm. expensive card. So to see this at Uncommon gives me kind of hope that they will push the envelope. You know, I, I'm sure they are they are aware that it's a better, it's just better mm-hmm. than Tendo Ice Bridge. Yes. So I'm definitely hyped on this card. It replaces the Painlands in standard to cast Yes, that's Eldrazi. exactly what I was worried about, the Eldrazi not yeah. being playable. And you can slot it into any kind of energy deck and it'll be great. However... I will throw this out. Better than Tendo Ice Bridge. Tendo Ice Bridge saw very little to no play in Standard and very little to no play in Block Constructed. I saw a little hmm. bit. The reason that it was played in the Amulet deck had a lot to do with the Bounce Lands to reset it. And oh, I see. The reason, one of the reasons for the price was that Kamigawa was kind of a low point for Magic. It didn't sell super well, so there's a little bit suppressed supply. So better than Tendo does not even mean it will see any standard play. However, I still like it though. It will see, this from, will see standard play. From a um, from like a reprint, this is kind of what they call a functional reprint almost. Like I know people argue about what that means. Oh, it's not exactly the same. Blah blah blah. Right. But to me, this is a functional reprint that, if anything, it's better. Significantly better because so yeah. they have the ability to do so. Now, will they do so with reserve this card? Still unknown. But, you know, this is a land which 
you know, there's other lands on the reserve list, uh, 10 of them in particular, that I would uh, be uh-huh. excited to see how they creatively, how they could, if possible, creatively um, create a functional reprint. Yeah, print them as a legend in an Eter- Eternal Master set. Like, that doesn't break their word to... to... Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's, it, it's appealing to me that they still can do something like this. Yes. Okay, it's a good pick. Better, definitely a lot better than Tendo. Um, my next pick, I'm picking a combo card and a life gain card, Etherflux Reservoir. Super cool. Mm. Four mana artifact. Whenever you play a spell, you, you gain X life for Storm. So the first spell, you gain one. The second spell, you gain two. The third spell, you gain three. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and it has an ability where you can Death Star people. You pay 50 life and blast someone for Oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. Which is awesome. However, I think this card is... is we, ha- we have a little bit of, of Storm combo list going around, which I think are good, and even underrated and misunderstood because people are like, okay, 50 life for 50 damage feels really Timmy. But... It what does. people are missing out on is this is a crazy life gain card. Like Prism Ring saw lots of play the last time around, gaining a life every time you play a blue spell. This card, if you stick it on the fourth turn and don't get killed, you untap, you're gaining three life a turn for the rest of the game. That is that is powerful, right? A Fevered Visions deck does not want to see this. Yeah, it's uh, definitely Adverdex something. don't want to see it. Like, as an old school player, I would never expect life gain to be so popular or so strong. They did a really fantastic job uh, making a old ability kind of new again, or more aggressive, way more aggressive than yeah. it's ever been. Like, forget the 50 life, 50 damage thing and read the card again. Like, remove that from the card. It's like, wow, this is really powerful life gain. You know, that the, the fact that it is also the win condition for a storm deck on top of that, once you've stabilized and gone off, is pretty amazing. Maybe we'll, time will tell if it's a Timmy card. Also, in uh, EDH, what do you start with? 30 life? 40 life? 40 life. Yeah, ten, just ten, 11 more life and you can Death Star someone. No one wants Wait, to attack. Wait, did you start him. with 40 life or 30 life? I think you start with 40. I don't play EDH, but... I, I haven't played in a while. Maybe this gets banned in EDH. <laughs> yeah, probably. If you start with 40, definitely. Um, okay, my la- my number one pick is the last remaining Planeswalker. I'm very... Um, she's actually my favorite. I actually like her better than Chandra. Um, Nissa, Vital Force. Mm. Uh, right now she's at 24.99, which I think if it drops below 20 or 15, it's interesting to look at. Uh, plus one untap target land you control until your next turn. It becomes a five five with haste, so it can protect. You can protect her. Yeah, that's important note. Yep, uh, minus three return target and permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, so it gives you some type of card advantage, card selection. Uh, minus six, and this is why I like her because it gets her to her minus six extremely fast, especially with Gideon, uh, Oath of Gideon. Immediate. Immediate, yeah, and that's awesome for a ultimate. Uh, you get an emblem whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. You may draw a card. You know, for green to have this much card advantage, like, is crazy because they just want to ramp and just keep ramping and playing huge spells. Uh, but a lot of times when I was playing the green red ramp deck, the Adrazi ramp deck, you would just not have anything to do because you don't have the huge spell in your hand. You just keep playing lands. So this kind of makes your lands. Um, valuable, and it makes your land acceleration even towards the late game. You know, you're just going to uh, explosive vegetation draw two. I think explosive vegetation rotated out. Um, but, yes, um, but Nissa's renewal is in six mana. What game? Oh, yeah. six, and then, three yeah, lands Nissa's, draw three. Then, uh, Nissa's yeah. something else like Journey or something. Pilgrimage also rotated. But, oh, Pilgrimage. Yeah, that one rotated. Yeah. That was a really good one. They'll print some but, more good ramp. Yeah, I mean, I like her a ton. I think she will see play. And, you know, I'm actually... I play Magic Duels now. Like, the, oh, yeah, really? the game. And this is the card I'm most excited for oh, that game. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good pick. It's a good card. It's We've never seen such a quick ultimate. It's not like an, oh, I win the game ultimate. Oh, no, but, it's not amazing Yeah, ultimate, but, but it's a pretty cool one. Just drawing extra cards is... Because you can draw a ton of extra cards. Yeah, to a turn, or if you 
bladed woodland draw an extra two right there oh, yeah you evolving have, you know, wild you draw it. two you grab a evolving wild or something then you're drawing two a turn off yeah. one card yeah seems Plus good to me draw step oh, i i expected you to have the fast lands on the list oh you know they are interesting but uh -huh. i chose the four planeswalkers and then the one land that sure i, I like the fast lands uh -huh. I'm just not sure that this standard... I mean, what do you think about them? I don't know if I will... It's almost too them. obvious. I mean, I'm not picking them as, like, my most... I mean, it, they're they're going to see lots of playing standard and modern. I don't know if the fast lands see play, any playing legacy, but, like, blue-red Delver gets a boost. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely... Uh, you know, yeah, definitely. Blue-green Infect is going to like this. Abzan oh, yeah. decks <laughs> are going to play them. In standard, it's just... The aggro decks are gonna love this, and control decks will have no choice if they want good mana. Um, not my pick though. My number one pick is a common. This is a card that just it just seems too crazy to me, and that is Cathartic Reunion. One in oh, a what red. What does that one do? One in a red. Pitch two, draw three. Oh, with the uh, Chandra picture. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, so the first thing is like, wow, this thing is stupid in modern dredge because people have been playing Tormenting Voice. I've been playing Tormenting Voice in my Splendid Dredge deck. And this is this just, is just yeah, way, way better because who cares if they remand it if you're playing a Dredge deck? You just wanted to discard the cards. And, I mean, you can do things like Turn 1 Simeon Spirit Guide, Cathartic Reunion, Dredge 6, and then another 6, and then another 6 off Grave Trolls 18, turn over a couple <laughs> Narc Amoebas and Prized Amalgams and... Just go to town, finish on the second or third turn. Um, however, the reason it's on my list is not for that, but I think it's just an insane selection spell. I played Tormenting Voice in standard as selection. There's decks that play, uh, play uh, Tormenting Voice to enable Kozilek's return. There's uh, decks oh, yeah, that that's play a good it one. with Fiery Temper. Uh, Tormenting Voice sees play in the Fevered Visions deck. Cathartic Reunion... There's only really Spell Queller, and there's a new two-mana counter spell, which I don't expect to see too much play, but I'm picking it because it's an insane selection spell. If you have this in your red burn deck, you can keep any hand, right? Flooding, ooh, I discard my two mountains and get a fresh three. Uh, yeah. Play it with Be and Bedlam Reveler together in the same deck, and it's just oh, yeah, a, that would be a joke. I think insane. Cathartic Reunion is going to see all sorts of play in all sorts of formats it's just uh the strongest card selection we've seen in a long time so that's why i'm very excited for to just cast i want to be casting that card yeah the picture is very beautiful too and i'm looking at the foil cop the regular copy is 25 cents obviously for a common the foil copy is 199 mm -hmm. so even at that price point you know it's given that it will see play in modern for mm -hmm. almost guaranteed yes. with the dredge decks, which are becoming extremely popular right now. Yeah. And I, I see their price hikes go all up all the time on just uh -huh. Nakomiba is went from like a dollar to three dollars plus now. Mm. And so I like it in foil. Definitely a good choice and not one one that I totally forgot. Yeah, and I would also if you play standard, any red deck can benefit from at least one of these, I think. I believe that strongly. It's just... Well, one last question for you, then. Mm. How do, do you see Red Deck wins? Red Deck wins has not been mm. having a good time. Burn spells have been got getting weaker. Uh -huh. Does this set push it to be the most popular deck the first week after Kaldaz? Like, pretty much every um, set after release, it's Red Deck's Red Deck, Red Deck wins. Mm. It doesn't seem like we got the tools this time around. Um, I would agree with that. Harness Lightning is doesn't go to the face and it's energy yeah I, um, i'm surprised none of this goes to the face collective you know, defiance. all these red cards just hit creatures but that's not what you want to be doing most Wizards of the time. pushes you to play two colors more so now it seems but i mean you could play mono red i think zergo is still in dash is still no that might have rotated uh, zergo has gone yeah yeah mono red no dragon? but you could play blue red burn you could play red white aggro you could play green red energy aggro there's a lot of it's not a bad time to be a red mage in standard. Maybe mono red is not the best. I mean, we also have Collective Defiance, which is honestly one of the best standard burn it's spells. It's a lot printed. better than when I first played with it. I, it's very strong. It's good for the same reason Cathartic Reunion is good, because it's a variance fixer. You will never, ever flood if you have a Collective Defiance. 
because you can just True. discard your hand and draw a new one while you burning them and killing their creature. Yeah, I'm looking at the artwork, and there's a lot of ch Chandra like in the set, like artwork wise, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting. And I guess that's where we're gonna go from this point on. Planeswalkers, planeswalkers, planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gear hooks. I thought about picking the gear hooks. I thought you might have picked those together. Oh no way, <laughs> no way. Mm. <laughs> I think that that we'll see a lot of play. Yeah, I mean, definitely a good. Uh, you had an excellent top five list. I was surprised to see number one. Um, it's just the card I'm most excited about, actually. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. It's definitely going to be played. Play it so, in yeah, any red I mean, deck. Very cool list. Uh, mine is pretty obvious. I think everyone watching the video is like, he's going to pick four Planeswalkers and then something else. Yeah, well, the, the last one was the surprise, I guess. Oh, yeah, I was. <laughs> I was in suspense. I was like, "Is it gonna be the myth? Is it gonna be the gear hooks? Is it gonna be the fast lance?" <laughs> no, I mean, I'm telling you, like, one of the most interesting things about um, that reprint is I totally didn't expect it. It took mm -hmm. me by surprise. I was like, "Wow, they upgraded!" Uh, I think it was like a five or eight dollar card at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you can say, "Oh, you know, it's not that good because it's, it's you know from an old set." It just tells me there's multiple ways for them to reprint stuff. Yeah, it's a hint of the future. That card is more yes, than... Yes, it's a hint of the eye. future. I think it's of a hint of possible things to come. Yes. Also, that card is going to see tons of play. It's yes, an and it will see play. <laughs> all sorts of deck lists I've seen. Absolutely. All right, MTG Lion, thank you so much. Thanks, Travis. If you're watching from my channel, go... Yeah, I'll... If you're watching from my channel, I'll have a link below to yes. Chopper's channel as well. Yeah. So, and let us know if you want us to do this again. We've been trying to do it for every set. So. Yeah, we should. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll keep doing them. Everybody take care. Bye, guys.